Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will restore this 15 inch MacBook Pro I actually found in a local dumpster. It has no screws, no hard drive, no brackets, a swollen battery is dented full of dirt. It's in horrible condition. So join me on what has become a month long odyssey to get this MacBook back in working condition involving board level repair, 3D printing and all sorts of crazy shenanigans. I think you will enjoy it. So let's get started. So what we have here is a 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch that, like I said, I found in a local dumpster. It's in below average condition, I would say. I actually found it like that with leaves and water droplets on it and with the screws missing because this MacBook had a extremely swollen battery. It also had a huge dent here and it's absolutely dirty. It's really filthy. I found the MacBook separated from the, from the back panel here. So there's actually also dirt inside of it, which is um, also very nice. But this actually isn't even the biggest problem with this Mac. The biggest problem is on the inside here. So if we remove all the dirt, we can see a few problems. The first and obvious one, the battery is missing. I also found the battery in the dumpster, but it was so extremely swollen that I really did not want to uh, take this battery with me. The next problem is there's no hard drive and there's also no hard drive caddy. There also is no memory in here. But now we will come to the biggest problem. It has to do with the tape here. I was not the one who put the tape here, by the way. If we lift that up, we can see something that is quite problematic. And that is that here would normally be the connector for our Wi-Fi card. So we have no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, nothing. I'm not even sure if the MacBook would power on like this. I haven't tried it out because I want to fix this before uh, giving the MacBook Pro power. Besides that, it's actually in okay condition. If you ignore all, all the, the things that are wrong, this MacBook is in perfect condition. I can show you the inside real quick. Ah, oh, there's also oh, there's so much dirt on this MacBook. As you can see, it is dirty, but it has the nice non-reflective screen which is quite cool. I've never had a MacBook with that. There's quite a lot to fix on this MacBook. But besides that, really, I, I really like the, this generation of MacBook Pro. So I think it's worth saving and upgrading. I should start with the connector here, since if that fails, the whole MacBook is not of very much use to me because I want to have uh, Bluetooth peripherals and also Wi-Fi on it. So I went on eBay and I bought myself the port and I want to solder that back on. I have a bit of experience with hot air soldering, um, but I haven't yet fixed a MacBook with it. So let's see if that actually works. I mean, the first step would probably be to, to check if this is even the right connector because there are many connectors and I'm not 100% sure about it. So let me check that. Wow. It is not, it is not the correct connector. So in the meantime, let's clean the MacBook. Okay, that MacBook was just too dirty for my normal cleaning methods. So I actually just took it in the shower with me. So yeah, now it's clean. At least this bottom panel is clean. The rest of the MacBook is still absolutely filthy. But sadly, I can't just clean the whole MacBook with water. Or I mean I can, but I would need to uh, disassemble it completely, which I won't do. Let's take a look at the other side of the MacBook. Someone took a dump on this MacBook. No, it's probably just dirt. <laughs> or at least I, I hope it's dirt. Sprayed with isopropanol. Nice. So yeah, that looks a whole lot better. It has some minor scratches here and there, but what can I do? It's over 10 years old and I found it in the trash. Now let's have a look on the inside of the clamshell. Wow, it's so dirty, this thing. 
as you can see, there is even, even dirt on this side, of course. I mean, why wouldn't there be dirt on, on all the sides here? Some dried leaves. It's not perfect, but at least it's not a biohazard anymore, which is quite nice. So the last part is the screen. I don't think you're supposed to clean the matte finish using isopropanol. So let's get some water. Yeah, that, that looks okay. So with that done, and my table being absolutely filthy, I think the time has come to wait for the connector because the next step will be repairing this. Several months later. So now that the project completely fell apart, let me get you back up to speed with everything. I ordered the wrong connector once, which took two months to arrive from China. Then I ordered the right connector and waited another month thinking I was some sort of dust dude one because I did some hot air soldering a few times. That obviously failed <laughs> and I completely borked the connector, but luckily not the board. Here you can see the completely melted connector. Finally, I ordered another connector, waited another month and soldered that on. And as far as I can tell, this time it actually worked. At least visually everything looks to be connected. So now, after a delay of 4 months, I am finally back to working on this MacBook. I put some memory in it, so we can uh, boot the device up. Obviously, uh, as you can see here, we still have a few problems to solve. The first one um, being that there is no battery and the second one that there is no hard drive and also no bracket for it. But yeah, here underneath here is our soldered in connector. I connected the uh, flex cable that goes to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card here and all the antennas. So I think we can try to power the MacBook up now and see if we at least get the boot chime. That way we know that I at least didn't completely screw up the logic board. So let's do that. In keeping with the spirit of this video, I also have a trash picked power adapter, which I had to break open to replace the MagSafe end because uh, it was completely broken. And you can actually buy these online for a few euros. And uh, then I just glued it together with uh, scotch tape. So this is probably uh, very safe to use. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if that works. I'm really curious <laughs> if this actually worked. Plug the power adapter in. Hmm, we don't see a light here. Usually um, we should see the red light even if, I think, even if there isn't a battery, we should at least see the, the red light. But let's try powering the device on. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, that was anticlimactic. Um, I'm not sure if the, if the power cable is not plugged incorrectly. Wow, it doesn't boot. Oh no. I just actually noticed that the trackpad has also lifted um, on the right corner here, probably because of the uh, expanding battery. We also have to fix that at some point, if the device actually works. I think some MacBooks have to actually be reset um, before you can power them on without a battery. So let's do that. Hold the power button for, I think, 10 seconds it was. Connect the power cable. And there's still nothing. Ah! I can hear the fans and they sound horrible. Ah! Can you hear that grinding noise? Yes! <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so... Um, I... You probably can't see that. Oh, these fans sound horrible. Um, you can see we had the boot chime and we also have 
the, the boot screen, but it, uh, of course there is no uh, hard drive in here, so it can't find one. But do you hear this horrible noise from the fans? When I was cleaning the device, I actually found dirt inside of the fans. And uh, probably I didn't get all the dirt out. Because this sounds absolutely horrible. Okay, but it wants to boot. It wants to boot. So now let's give it a chance to actually boot. So I prepared a few things. The first one being this 256 gigabyte Samsung SSD. And I'm not talking about severe surface dirt stuck to the MacBook when I found it. I'm talking about a solid state disk. Um, I also prepared a macOS Mavericks installer because Mavericks is actually the last version of OS X with the skeuomorphic UI, which I quite like. And I also got myself 8 gigabytes of RAM. I know these MacBooks can take 16, but the memory sticks uh, to accomplish that are very hard to find. So here we have a pair of Corsair Value Select memory. It's DDR3 and um, I tested it in another MacBook. They worked. So now to put the RAM in, it's not really an issue. We have our memory slots here. The real problem is over here, where I don't have the screws to hold a drive in and I don't have the bracket, which is obviously worse. Um, I bought the screws when I bought the second connector. I bought the, the drive screws and also case screws for the MacBook Pro. But for the um, drive bracket here, I actually just uh, 3D printed one. It looks like this. I added some screws to it and now I think we can actually try to mount our SSD in here. Not sure why screws need to be uh, put in a anti-static bag. But yeah, in typical Apple fashion, this is of course also a Torx screw, a T6 screw uh, to be exact. I really hope we can get this MacBook working. <laughs> I spent so much time and effort and money uh, for the connectors and screws. I really hope we can get it working. And I really hope my soldering worked and we can actually have uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth again. So let's connect the drive. Put the one side in here. Get our 3D printed bracket. Ha! It actually fits. It fits perfectly. Nice. Do I want to fix the trackpad now? Yeah, I mean, why not? Can you see how bent this bracket is? It's completely bent out of shape. But I'm pretty sure we can just bend that back and have a working trackpad. At least mechanically, I, I don't know actually if the electronics work, but we will of course find that out soon. Okay, did that work? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not perfect, but it's definitely better. And the, and the trackpad clicks now again. Okay, another thing I have to fix at some point is this big old dent here, but I'm not sure how to do that yet. If you have any ideas, please let me know. I thought about 3D printing something that has the same radius and then just trying to use a clamp to get the dent out, but I'm not too sure about that. And let's, let's first see if the device functions electronically. So now let's just put our RAM in. I also googled um, why I had to hold down the power button to boot the MacBook. And apparently the reason is that these old MacBooks are actually not designed to be run without a battery. So yeah, enough talking. Let's put our back cover on. Okay. Now our MacBook is more or less back together and I have my boot drive here. Ah, this fan sounds so bad. It's, it's horrible. It's so horrible. I'm pressing the Alt key to get to the boot menu. I heard the DVD drive. Let's see if it at least boots into the installer. It shows the installer and it says choose a network here, which probably means that our Wi-Fi card works. I don't know if you can actually hear me still because the fans are at 100% and make weird grinding noises. So yeah, I will skip 
as much of this installed process as possible and I will see you later. Let's see if it detects the eternal drive. <laughs> the, <laughs> the internal, not the eternal. Um, yes, it seems to be working. Let's give it a fitting name. It came from the trash. To be honest, it still is trash. So let's call it that. Okay, it looks like we are installing. Let's see you later. Okay, so I know what's wrong. Since we don't have a battery, the date is wrong. Apparently the date can't be older than the release date of the macOS version, but it also can't be too new. So I tried it with um, today's date, but replaced 2023 with 2013 and it worked. So that is weird, but now it seems to be installing. Yay! So let's see you later. Okay, so now I actually have macOS Mavericks installed on here. But the process was so complicated. Every time I tried to boot from the SSD and it was in its last uh, finalization step, the MacBook would just boot loop. So what I did after trying it twice, I said, okay, maybe I use another MacBook because of course I'm a huge Apple tech hoarder. I tried to install macOS and then transplant the SSD back over to the MacBook Pro, but I had the same problem. Every time I tried to boot it on the MacBook Pro, it just froze. And then it hit me. What did I tell you in the middle of my video? That we have a power problem here when the battery is removed. This charger I used is actually 65, or no, it's a 60 watt charger. These MacBooks here have a dedicated GPU and they need an 80 watt charger. So I looked through all my cables, but not a single one of my MagSafe One chargers is more than 60 watts. And then I had a genius idea. I do own, and I really have no chance of fitting this into the shot, I do own a 2010 cinema display and it's the 27 inch version. And cinema displays, apart from having weak ass cables, uh, as you can see, <laughs> uh, they actually have a MagSafe connector to charge a MacBook Pro. And they can supply way more power. So I tried that and I got the MacBook booting. So now instead of just using a simple power brick, I have a um, 27 inch display uh, right next to me. So yeah, let's put the MacBook down so you can see it. I will not use the, the screen uh, part of the display. I will just use it as a powered adapter. You know, sometimes I think I'm crazy for collecting all these old Apple devices, but as you can see, sometimes it comes in handy that you have many devices uh, to try all that weird stuff out. Sometimes these cables only work in one direction if they're very old. Ah. Of course. Okay, so the cable only works in that direction and as you can hear, the MacBook is starting to boot. And the fans are not, as you can hear, the one still sounds absolutely horrible, um, but they are actually not running at full force or full speed. I just wanted to make a simple repair video. I had to 3D print something, I had to do a board level repair, it took months to make and now I'm sitting here using a 27 inch display as a power adapter. Oh boy! But as you can see it actually boots and now I can see first of all if our um, repair actually worked and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is working and second of all uh, what hardware we actually have because I don't know. Let me fold that down a bit so I can actually see. Oh, it's so much more quiet. I love it. Ooh, it's a i7 version. Nice. 2 gigahertz i7 and <laughs> I mean, I have to blur this, <laughs> but you can believe me. Uh, Bluetooth seems to be working and it sees uh, devices in my home. Great. So it, it actually worked. Okay. Um, what, what graphics do we have? The 
HD6490M. I actually have to, I have to Google that. Uh, and of course, um, Intel uh, integrated graphics. I don't think there are any other interesting parts here. I mean, Wi-Fi we could check. Okay, yeah, I chose the version. Yeah, so apparently, apparently our upgrade worked. I also want to see what screen we have because it's actually the anti-glare screen. And as far as I know, this one actually has a higher resolution. Um, yeah, it's the high resolution one. I mean, that's nice. I now have a 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro with an i7 and an SSD and eight gigabytes of RAM for the low, low price of my sanity. <laughs> so since this video took months to make now, I will just leave it at that. And I also don't want to uh, produce hour long videos. So thank you all for watching. I think this was an absolutely wild ride. Maybe I will do something with this MacBook in the future, fix the dent, maybe disable the, the dedicated GPU because these models, they have problems with the uh, GPU failing. So as long as I can boot a operating system, maybe I uh, will disable that. So if you like this kind of content, these completely <laughs> weird, cursed tech videos, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, I would really appreciate it and see you next time.